قد قال تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشر وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم رب زدني علما رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear respected listeners Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The next dua from our ad'iyya the duas that begin with Rabbana in the Holy Quran is also from Surah Al-Baqarah and it is probably a dua that we have not only said in our lifetime but we more than likely know by heart and we have memorized um, and we are very fond of this dua so inshallah we're going to spend some time on many on some aspects of this particular dua um, beginning with its virtue and how often the Prophet ﷺ would revisit this dua to then put into our minds how special this dua is and then we will look at the actual verse preceding this dua to understand the relevance of its revelation, revelation and what message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent down to us through this dua so for number one uh, the very important aspect is which dua is this what am I referring to so this is surah al-baqarah verse number 201 and the dua in question is rabbana atina fi dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. The translation of which would be, O oh, our Lord, grant us good in the world and good in the hereafter and save us from the punishment, the torment of the fire. Now again, there is a message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers through the verses before this dua is revealed in relation to the rituals of hajj and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights an observation that inshallah will go to later in another lesson but today I just want to focus on the importance of this dua and how do we gauge the importance of this particular dua. Well, number one, it's mentioned by Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal in the Quran. So its significance is immediately highlighted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two <clears throat> is how often our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam used to recite this dua inshallah i'm receiving some messages that it's not online it is on air press play you not press play so apologize for the connection issues once again 
Well, just to recap, just so because people, I guess, missed the introduction, the du'a that we're speaking about today is the chat for the verse from Surah Al Baqarah, verse number two zero one, and the du'a is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al O oh, our Lord, grant us good in the world and good in the hereafter. And save us from the torment of the fire. So this du'a, there are two sections to it. One is why was it revealed, and there are, there is a tremendous lesson that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teaches the audience. Um, its revelation takes place in the midst of the conversation of Hajj and Umrah, um, and that is something Inshallah will cover at another time. Today. What I want to focus on is how much reverence and importance the Messenger وسلم, gave this particular dua. It's mentioned that in the tafsir of Mazhari that Rasulullah used to recite this dua very, very often. An example of this is. Abu Hassan ibn Dhahak radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to say that even if the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make dua a hundred times meaning for a hundred different things he would begin with the above dua and end off with it as well. And if he used to only make two du'as, then one of them used to be the above. Meaning such importance was given by the Messenger وسلم, to Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana that no matter whether the Prophet Sallallahu du'a was going to be lengthy or if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's du'a was going to be short due to time or circumstance, whatever the situation, the Prophet Wasallam would ensure that from the du'a, this particular du'a would be mentioned. Baqi ibn Makhlad narrates from Anas ta'ala an, that the above du'a, Rabbana atina fi dunya, used to be in the beginning of the Messenger Wasallam's du'a, the middle of the Prophet Wasallam's du'a, and at the end of the Messenger Wasallam's du'a. And what Anas is emphasizing is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar was so special to the Messenger وسلم, that when the Prophet وسلم, would begin the dua, he would begin with this. In the middle of the dua, this dua would be repeated. And at the end of the du'a, meaning such was the importance of this du'a, it wasn't sufficient to only mention it once. But a multiple, multitude of times, this du'a was part of the du'a of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala who relates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite the above du'a. In Ibn Kathir, he mentions that Ibn Abbas ta'ala on Humana rates that Rasulullah sallallahu said, I do not pass any corner of the Kaaba at the time of Tawaf, but that I see an angel at that corner saying, Ameen. So Prophet said, Anytime I come to a corner of the house of Allah, so any of the four corners, there is an angel standing there, and whatever dua a servant says at that time, this angel is saying Ameen to it. So, when you pass by it, recite the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab anna. And so you can see from the above hadith that I've just quoted, and practical examples of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that these, that the dua of Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab anna, was frequently on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And in fact, not just like the Prophet used to recite this dua in normal duas, it is from the masnoon prescribed duas during tawaf. 
So during tawaf, generally any form of dhikr is allowed, any dua is allowed. But is there prophetic duas? Then we find that the from Rukunul Yamani to the Hajr Aswad, that this dua of Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa kin adab al nar is something that is actually prescribed in the book of fiqh, fiqh as something that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself was particular of. That Rabbana and what a grand meaning. That oh Allah and, and again the story behind its revelation, why was this is this du'a mentioned by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? What is the purpose of Allah revealing it? Why was the what was the need to stress this? Uh, inshallah, that is a different discussion. Inshallah, there is a lesson. There is a tremendous lesson in why it was revealed, and I don't. I want to leave that for a separate occasion. Hopefully, on Thursday we cover that. Um, but today is just to understand how special this du'a is that the Prophet ﷺ would frequently use this du'a in his own ad'iyya. And it's a very simple, very, very simple du'a to make. It's very easy to learn. In fact, if you break it down into sections, there are three things that are concentrated on. The good of this world, the good of the hereafter, and save you from the fire of Jahannam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina adab al Like I said, most of us not only have heard this dua, but most of us know this dua and we make this dua. And so, the first lesson to understand that from the Holy Quran, from the Rabbanas, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is established to have used in terms of dua. This is one dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would frequent quite regularly. In fact, Anas Radiallahu Ta'ala who says, there wasn't an occasion where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua except that part of his Alayhi Salatu Wasallam's dua was to include this statement, this dua to Allah inside the rest of the dua that he made. Whether and this is crucial. Whether the dua that the Prophet ﷺ made was lengthy or short. If it was lengthy, then you would hear Rabbana atina fi dunya a multitude of times within that one dua. And if it was short, then at least once the Prophet ﷺ would make this dua of Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. So from today's lesson, what we gauge, what we understand, is how much importance our Nabi, Rasulullah ﷺ, gave to this dua. That any time he والسلام, made dua to Allah, it established that the Sahaba said that they used to hear the Prophet ﷺ make this dua of Rabbana Atina within it. So, inshallah, from this moment onwards, whenever we make dua to Allah, try to include this dua of Rabb. It's very short, it literally is three themes in three sentences that takes no less. Or no more, I should say, than ten seconds to utter out. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al And if we don't know the Arabic and we are unable to learn it because of language difficulty, simple. O oh our Lord, grant us good in the world, grant us good in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment and torment of the fire of Jahannam. So, insha Allah, from this moment onwards, whenever we make du'a to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Whenever, whatever the occasion may be, whether it's a lengthy du'a, whether it's a short du'a, include this du'a within our litany of supplication that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no more opportune time than what we have right now, these days of Dhul Hijjah that are upon us, which commence from Maghrib today, is a time of dhikr. I went over in the Jum'ah, the last Jum'ah that we had, that the Prophet ﷺ emphasized, أَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ التَّسْبِيحِ وَالتَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام, that say in abundance, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar, dhikr. And alongside dhikr, there is the concept of dua. So in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that are upon us, and when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
with the hope that the blessed nature of these days brings about more acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then inshallah engage in more dua. And within those duas, try now to establish this practice of saying the statements of Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kin adabinna. InshaAllah, make that tahiyya an intention, Allah will facilitate it for us. The second aspect of why it was revealed and what's the lesson that Allah teaches us, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, then inshaAllah when we continue on Thursday, I will expound on that. And like I said, there was a beautiful lesson that Allah teaches us. Allah specifically speaks about this dua as a, uh, not as a story, but as a teaching mode to the ummah that there is, this is how you should be doing dua. And the lessons within that, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, then inshallah we will continue with this on Thursday. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the tawfiq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of you the tawfiq. I do apologize. Um, there was some issue with the mixer. However, on our YouTube page, this will go up when it's f with its full recording, um, which I sort of recovered anyways once we got started. Allah grant us all the tawfiq and Allah protect us. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfirukum wa natubu ilayk. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.